Let's talk about using common market indicators to judge the performance of your investment portfolio. Now, this question came up twice in one day, so I figured I'd better address it in a video. One person was asking about the Dow, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, Russell, and looking at his portfolio versus these things and saying, hey, how are things going? Well, it's not a really good indicator for reasons I'll point out. Dow and S&P 500, large U.S. stocks. NASDAQ, now they're smaller companies and very tech heavy, so it might have a little bit more in common with the Russell 2000. How do we tell that? We can look at what are called correlation coefficients. So if we look at the correlation of large U.S. stocks in the Dow, you see it's extremely high, 94. The closer that is to one, that means they basically move together with each other. Now you see a little bit lower correlation with the Dow and the NASDAQ because they're different, different size companies really in both of those indexes. Dow is huge companies, NASDAQ a little bit smaller, a little bit more tech heavy. Now, if we look at a portfolio, we want even lower correlations than that, though, because that's what adds to diversification. That's what gives us the reduction in the risk of a portfolio that we have when things don't move in tandem with each other. So if we look at, let's say, International Small in the NASDAQ, we see very low correlation. Or if we see international value stocks with either the Russell or with the NASDAQ or any of these other areas of the market, we say very, very low correlation. So that's what we want to be looking at is totally different areas in the market that, let's face it, the media is not going to report on. When's the last time you heard them say, hey, here's what international small stocks did this day or what international value stocks did today? They don't talk about that. They're going to tell you those other things, but realize it's not a great way of telling how things are going. Now, let's take a look back through the decade by decade, international versus U.S. You can see that international, you know, you can have periods of time where international does tremendously well versus U.S. stocks. So you definitely want to own them in periods of time where U.S. stocks do better than international. So that's why we want to be in these various areas. Because long run, you see right here with this line, the blue line being international stocks and the orange line being U.S. stocks. The red line is what if I own them both? You see definitely we have diversification benefits and a reduction in risk when we own them both.